There's a funny comic strip that I'm reminded of today about two men that were walking through the desert and you could see them walking and walking and then you could see that one man had a huge bag of Lay's potato chips and after a while he looked at the other and says, I'm starting to wonder if I should have been eating these the whole time. <laughs> when you look at the desert and when you look at potato chips and the person eating and walking and nothing around for miles upon miles, it instantaneously makes you thirsty. Have you ever been thirsty before? Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Middlebrook, and I want to welcome you to the special edition of the Light of Liberty, the Easter week edition, as we're going through the seven last sayings of Christ and the words that encapsulate the meaning behind it. And the word today is need. Many times we have a need within our life, not to be thirsty, but also to be hungry. But how many of you have a need right now, maybe to be able to get outside your house, maybe to go somewhere to see people, to be around people because of social distancing and the quarantines and things that are happening around us. We all have a variety of different needs, supplies that we need to get, Lysol that we need to get. Where in the world can we get toilet paper? All of these needs are around us. But my friends, it is nothing in comparison to the need that is expressed by Christ upon the cross. In John chapter 19, verse 28, he says two very powerful words, I thirst. Now just think about everything that has been happening all the way up until that time, that he has been bleeding, he's been scourged, he's been beaten, he's been put upon the cross. It's in the midst of the, the time of the day and all the stuff that is happening, his body is completely dehydrated, so much so that it says in scriptures, according to Psalmist, that his skin and his body and his bones begin to start shrinking together, that his mouth and his tongue begin to cleave together. And then Jesus is now simply saying these words. He demonstrates not only the physical suffering of his life, but he also understands us while we go through our physical restrictions and struggles in our life. When he says, I thirst, the humanity of Christ simply says, I understand the need for not only water to drink, but I now understand a deeper need in my life because I now know through what Christ said of the spiritual need that I have for water that comes from him, living water, that Christ says that I will give everlasting life. In John chapter 4, verses 13 through 14, as Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman, he says this, but whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give shall become in him a fountain of water springing up inside of him. What does that mean? That means that when we accept Christ as our Savior, we have a fountain within our heart that begins to spring up the living water of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in Proverbs 4.23 it says, Guard your heart, for it is the issues, the spring of life. Jesus walked in our shoes in the midst of the need of his life, showing us that he could meet the needs in our life. Let me ask you something. Do you have a need today? Call out unto him. Because even scripture says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, they shall be satisfied. Their thirst will be quenched, and their appetite taken care of. If you have a need, I want to introduce you to the great need meter today. Thank you for joining me today on this light of liberty. And remember, to him whom the Son is set free. Is free indeed. Now that's a life that you can live and love, especially on this Good Friday, because it's a great Friday because of the cost that is now being paid for us as we now stand before a Father full of grace and truth because of grace. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.